Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another JTEC video. Today we're going to be going over hydraulic controls and how to disassemble and actually just reassemble and measure these out. Uh, we've got all our parts together, or our tools we need, various size Allen wrenches, a wrench, a T gauge, and a um, micrometer, whatever, and our disassembled valve control body. Now, uh, we already took this apart, so I'm just going to do a quick overview of how to measure these out. Now, one note before I forget, if you're ever confused about which side is which, as far as the lever control side or any spring side, these springs, if you look at the label and that you can read it correctly, that means it's in the correct position, as in the levers will go on this side, the springs will go on this side. So we're going to go ahead and start. And There's two ways to really measure these. The uh, either straight measure on the inside or very carefully use your T-gauge inside of there and measure that. But when you take these measurements, you want to make sure to measure one way and the other way and record your measurements and compare them to the manufacturer specifications. So, like I said, that's 584. Five eight three, and the general tolerance, I believe, is around two thousandths of an inch. Five eight five. Five eight four. Five eight six. Five eight eight. So that one's a bit close, but it's still within tolerance. Five eight six. And 584. And so, measuring this, and you would do the same thing on the opposite side, once again, recording your findings. And I'm just going to demonstrate on one. It's the same principle. You measure one way and a cross measurement, but you only really need to measure these two portions because those are the ones that help keep the hydraulic fluid inside the system. So, like I said, measurement 591, turn it 90. 590 and 590 turn it 90 and 590 so this one is good and obviously these are very finely machined parts so you want to make sure to keep which one goes in which port and that's how you measure these and this and so in the effort of saving time I'm just going to go ahead and start the reassembly process and these lands right here are very sharp so you don't want to move across that with force be very careful so if you do need to push use a flat object the spring side what have you you do want to make sure these holes are straight up and down for our, our lever handles later. It's a tight fit, but you gotta be careful. And if like as with everything else, if you ever get confused about how to reassemble, look up the manufacturer information and they should give you the service information. and everything else when you tighten make sure they go in a cross pattern for equal clamping pressure
Alright, so we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna get these all back on, I'll get right back to you. Alright, so I almost got this completely assembled, but one thing I did want to touch on is uh, these holes right here are what connects to the lever portion. So you want to make sure to hook those in. So when you do have this completely assembled and you test it out, that it actually operates correctly. Once I get this one in, I'll put the handles in and check to make sure I got them all. Handles in. So like I said, you get the handles put in and make sure it's actually hooked in. All you do is operate the levers. Make sure you're actually hooked in. All right, so we're all good on that portion. We can go ahead and hook in the covers for the springs. And one thing. You can put these in either orientation, this way or the other way. It just depends on uh, the clearance for the system you're operating on. But obviously, once you have them put in, you want to make sure the rest of them follow the same pattern. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these on, and I'll be right back. Alright, so as you can see, we got uh, our levers and caps installed, so we're going to go ahead and put in our pressure relief valve, which is adjustable through the use of this set screw that pushes in there, or goes in there, and you adjust it, which presses on the spring, which changes the angle, or the, um, the amount of pressure that the, the spring will uh, push back at, or the system pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and all the way in there. And you got to make sure that spring is seated on that little nub, which I'm not sure you can see. And once again, if you are servicing these, any O-rings or such, you would go ahead and replace. Get a wrench. Tighten that up. Like I said, the set screw is pretty easy. Push it in until you reach the required system pressure. Then use this lock nut to lock it in. And the only thing left is some cap screws. So it goes down. And so as you're set it up in the system, you have your in port, your out port, and then uh, going to various functionalities, whatever system you have, raise, lower, side, just depending. And you change the flow, but move the spools back and forth, which open up different channels for the hydraulic fluid to flow through. And I just wanted to say thank you for your time. Have a great day.